September the 26th, 2015, and it's steaming the twin-cylinder tangy type engine that I rebuilt a short while back. This is only what I would term a brass display type engine, but it runs very well on compressed air. I wanted to see how it ran on steam. I'm using my coal-fired boiler for this. It's a great old boiler, and I'm using the hand pump here to put some water in it. The brass device to the left of the boiler is a boiler feed pump. I'm not using this in this demonstration, I'm just using the hand pump. I have various bits of wood laying about in the workshop, so I cut them up on the bandsaw and I'm just giving them a quick squirt with some WD-40. Sometimes I use white spirit, whatever I've got laid about. But obviously I never use petrol and I never use alcohol, the flash point's far too high. All I then have to do is light one of the pieces of wood and place it through the fire hole door into the firebox, followed by several other pieces. Initially, I don't bother shutting the fire hole door. I like to see what's going on. Once I see that the wood is fully lit, I then shut the fire hole door and wait until the wood becomes incandescent before I add any coal. While I'm waiting for the water to boil, it's time to fill the displacement lubricator. This is a bit of a lash up on the silicone rubber piping as you can see, but as long as the displacement lubricator is the right way up, it will work fine. It is of course obviously important to replace the cap on the displacement lubricator, after which I can have a look back at the boiler. Looking at the boiler there's not much change here, but at least the wood is well alight, so I'm going to shut the fire hole door and let it get on with it. You can use other materials to light boilers. You can use charcoal soaked in paraffin, that's very good. Once I have a little bit of pressure, and I verify this by blowing the whistle, I will open the steam blower. The steam blower blows a jet of steam up the chimney, which draws the fire. In this clip I'm opening the steam valve to allow some steam to the engine. This steam is very low pressure, but it's just enough to warm up the cylinders. And on an engine of this type, which is very small and quite delicate, I'm very carefully moving the crankshaft back and forth to clear the condensate. While the cylinders are warming up with the low pressure steam running into them, I'm just doing a quick oil round on the engine. All the usual points, anywhere where something moves. I speeded up that bit just in case anyone slipped into a quick coma. Right, the engine should be just about ready to run. The cylinders should be warm enough now. So very carefully, I'm turning the engine over by hand. If you do this with any kind of steam engine, never force it. If you get a hydraulic lock, something will break. And particularly on a small delicate engine like this one. Be patient, it will eventually go, and off it goes. And the first thing I notice is a steam leak on one of the cylinder covers. And the strange thing is, this is not the cylinder cover that I had the problems with. If you've watched the episodes about the rebuild of this engine, you'll know what I mean. This is the one that was okay, so the one I left alone. Anyway, I'll take the cover off and maybe make a new gasket or seal it. It's not a massive problem. It's at times like this when age-related doubt springs to mind. Have I tightened the cylinder cover nuts? Hmm, I'll just have a quick look at this. So I get my little adjustable spanner, and this is a barco adjustable spanner. Not to be confused with a cheap crappy one, this is a good one. And it just saves time hunting around for the correct size spanner. Yeah, some of these are quite slack, but I'm not going to over tighten them and shear them off. I think one of them is very slack, yeah, that one's really slack. I'll remove the cover and make another gasket, that'll fix it. This engine is basically an ornamental brass engine. It runs very well indeed, apart from the cylinder leak, but what I've had to do is drop the boiler pressure. And I've done this by turning off the blower and letting the fire settle. It's only running at about 35 psi, and as you can see, the fire is very dark. Once I turn the blower back on and shut the fire hole door, the fire will come back to life and the boiler pressure will rise, but not for this engine. I need to keep the temperature low so I don't damage the brass cylinder bores. It's time for me to stop talking. I'll leave you with the engine running. Poetry in motion, which is of course a steam engine. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.